The goal of this tutorial is to show how to create a sequence diagram in STAR UML2. I always begin by first creating a class diagram. I have a simple class diagram here showing a client class, a server class. The client has a single reference named server to the server class. Server class has a bunch of operations in it. Over here in the model containing this diagram, I right mouse click on the model and add a sequence diagram. Uh, here uh, you can see that a collaboration, something called a collaboration one, has been created. It's got inside of it something called interaction one, which has sequence diagram one in it. This is sequence diagram one over here. I can click on the collaboration. I could change its name if I wanted to. I can right mouse click on it. I could add, for example, a second interaction. So collaboration basically contains a bunch of interactions interactions in it. Coming back to the sequence diagram, I'm trying to show the interaction between a client object and a server object, so I need two lifelines. Lifeline 1 will represent uh, a client object, and this is the uh, client object through time. I'll make it a little bit longer. Time is flowing downwards down this dashed line. Here's This is going to be the server object. Here is its lifeline. Over here, you'll notice that collaboration, which has two interactions in it, now has two roles in it. Role 1 is the role played by lifeline 1. Role 2 is the role played by lifeline 2. I'm going to click on role 1. Here's the property sheet for role 1. You can change its name. I'll change it to client role. And uh, the important thing here is you can associate it with a class in your class diagram by clicking on this, this button here. I can drill down. I'll select the client class. And notice over here, lifeline 1, colon client, that indicates that this lifeline is an instance of the client class. I'll do the same thing with role 2. I'll click here. Let's change its name to server role. And under type, I'll click on this button. I'll drill down here. I'll select the server class. And now lifeline 2 is being shown as an instance of the server class. Next, let's send a message from lifeline 1 to lifeline 2. Down here, there are different kinds of messages that you can send. We mostly um, send ordinary messages, which correspond to method invocations. Okay, so here's message one. You'll see it's a solid shaft with a filled in dime and a solid triangle, rather, for the arrowhead. I'm going to select that, and over here, we can see uh, the name of the message. Uh, the source is lifeline one, the target's lifeline two. Down here is signature. I'll click on this button, and I can drill down to the server class and specify which one of these operations is being called. I'm going to select service A. We can also specify the arguments. I'll say arg1, for example. See the argument being specified here. And the assignment target could be specified. So here we see that um, service A is being called with arg1 as an argument, and the return value is being stored in a variable called result, which probably lives somewhere in the client. Um, this uh, box here indicates the period of time that service A is active. I'll stretch that out just to make it a bit bigger. So another thing that we can do uh, during this period of time is we could show instead of, I do this in, instead of an assignment target, so I'm going to erase that right now. We can show that near the uh, time when service A is about to terminate, a reply message is sent back to the client called results.
move this up here a little bit. Next, um, we can, uh, I want to demonstrate how combined fragments work. So I'll select combined fragment. Combined fragments allow us to specify some small amount of control logic inside of a sequence diagram. Uh, there are several kinds of combined fragments. I'll select combined fragment. Uh, we can see the interaction operator here is set to SEQ. It stands for sequential. Uh, Alt, alternative, I use that for one-way conditionals. OPT can be used for multi-way conditionals. PAR, parallel operations. Loop for iteration. And, and then there are more down here. So I'm going to select OPT. Over here you'll see that OPT is now the uh, operator for this combined fragment. So my goal in using this combined fragment is to show some simple control logic that's going to test whether ARG1 is valid or not. So the tricky part here is that I have to double left mouse click on this OPT. When I do so, this little add operand button shows up. It's the only place that I see this op add operand um, button appear. I'm going to click on that. And what's happened is a dashed line has divided the, uh, the combined fragment in half. Um, sort of overlap my result line. I'll make it a little bit bigger here. Okay, now clicking inside here, you might notice that I've selected some invisible rectangle inside of OPT, the combined fragment. That invisible rectangle is the first operand. If I click below it, another uh, invisible rectangle, that's the second operand. The operand, so here we have the property sheet down here for the operand, has a guard condition in it. And I could type in something like R1 is valid. So that's understood to be a Boolean condition. Down here in this one, I will, usually if it's two-way condition, I'll just have else be the guard for that. And so what I'm going to do is, I'll make this a little bit bigger. And I'm going to send in this guard to another reply message. And this reply message will just say error, for example. So now this diagram is showing that, uh, that at this point in time, the client has invoked service A of the server, some server object. Okay, uh, here the server is testing if ARG1 is valid. If that's true, then it's going to compute a result and send it back to Lifeline 1. Else, it'll send some kind of an error message back to Lifeline 1. That's all for now. Thanks for listening.